Give the Lord a hand of praise. Would you welcome my brother? He's going to come up here. His name is Apostle Walter E. Roberts. He's going to bless you with the word. He's going to lead you whatever he wants to do. I didn't tell him what to do. I didn't tell him what to say. Boy, don't hurt nobody in this place. I love you. <laughs> Have your way, Apostle. Glory to God. Amen. Can I get a good Kelsey. Ah, I can hear myself now. <laughs> Y'all in trouble. I can hear myself now. <laughs> well, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Anybody in here ever heard me preach before? If you have, raise your hand. Okay, a few of you all have. Praise God. I'm going to try not to act up too much. Praise God. <laughs> I only got two. <laughs> That's because I sweat a lot. <laughs> you know, I found out. I like tell people. You know, I didn't lose my hair until I started taking chemotherapy. And uh, I found out why I had hair, because I didn't know I sweat so much. <laughs> and the hair was holding the sweat back, glory to God. And after I lost my hair, I can remember the night, I can remember the night I had to just go ahead and shave the rest of it off because the barber couldn't help me anymore. It was patched up so bad. And finally, my barber, he'd been my barber for about eight or nine years. And he said, he said, Bishop, I can't help you anymore. He said, the only thing I suggest is you go ahead and shave it all, the rest of it off. And I was scared because I like having hair, you know. And uh, my son, my other son, uh, I think you met Walter. He came to power conference one year. And uh, Walter was, I don't know how old, he was, he was still at home, he was a teenager, and he got through playing the drums that night in praise and worship. I came out, it was a communion night, and I had my cassock on and everything, and, and he comes up and he just looks at me, and he looks, and he comes up and touches my, I said, don't touch my head. I said, this, we having church, get your hand off my head. <laughs> in the middle of the service, he putting his hand on my head and stuff. <laughs> my son, <laughs> I said, he must really love me, you know, but uh, so, but I learned quickly that, you know, the, there's nothing to hold the water up there anymore, so I got to have towels, and my brother's here making fun of how many towels I have, <laughs> glory to God, hallelujah, we just love the Lord, amen? amen, and yes, I am, I was raised a Holy Ghost preacher, <laughs> I had to learn how to teach, and I love teaching, amen, but you got a pastor who teaches all the time. Say amen. amen. So I don't have to teach you tonight. I just want to share a few scriptures with you. <laughs> oh, is anybody, was anybody as blessed as I was with all the stuff that's been happening here tonight? Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, man, thanks for inviting me tonight. This is awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Twyla, this is a great time. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just uh, Eric and Chris just acted up so bad and... You know, I tell you, then then had the nerve to bring the sister up here. <laughs> Lord, see now, see now they start messing with you. <laughs> they said we can do it without just males up here. We bring a female voice up here. Oh, glory to God! Can you stand the rain? Help me, somebody. I, hey, <laughs> Crystal, <laughs> Crystal. You know that's that's a really before y'all's time. Uh huh. See, uh huh. Y'all came, no, y'all came along later to that song. I remember when it came out, Melanie. I remember when it came out. 
Yeah, let me tell the truth. <laughs> when boy, what, what, what's those guy's name? Uh, the New Edition. Yeah, y'all was little. If you were still, if you was alive, you was little. Uh, that's the remix. <laughs> okay, that that was to remind y'all that it was a lot. It was around before y'all came out. It came around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Bell, Biv, DeVoe, and all them boys. Caleb, you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Caleb. Yeah. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you something. The kingdom is fun. The kingdom is a fun reality. Oh my God. I've been traveling. I don't know. I'm gonna try to I I'm not gonna be able to tell y'all everything that I had thought I had to say because it's too much too live up in here. Glory to God. And y'all got time constraints, glory to God. And I'm not really good as a time constraint preacher. <laughs> So I just know that I'm going to quit. I'm just not going to finish. Hello, somebody. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, but I've been traveling uh, over the last month. My God. I, I, I just every day for the, since the 1st of August. And I've been preaching different places. And, and three places in North Carolina going up. And five or six different cities in, in New York. And that's where we were raised in upstate New York. And, uh, and then coming back down the road, I preached again in North Carolina uh, in a couple of places and finished up in Georgia. This morning, I got on a plane by his grace, and it was the biggest trip I ever took <laughs> in a lot of ways. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm here tonight. Hallelujah. So, so, so you know, <laughs> Mrs. Mary Lou, I'm charged up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's the first son. Is the first son? Oh, you know, it's special to me. It's special to me. Let me tell you what I'm going to talk about. This is what John Osteen. Oh, John Osteen. Uh, not not Joel. Joel's daddy. See, I knew Joel's daddy. So yeah, some of y'all are you know acquainted with Brother Joel on TV. I can I can remember when Joel was the was the man who ran the grounds, the building and grounds of the church. I met when I met Joel. Joel was in the back office in the back floor of the back building and didn't want to come out. Didn't want to come out. When, when John took us around and said, hey, I want you to meet my son Joel over there. Joel, say hi to the preachers. And Joel just said, and, and he said, that's all you're going to get out of him. Come on, let's keep going. And you see him today. Hello, somebody. Now, why did I just say that? Because the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell you, woman of God, it may be, this may have been a shock to you tonight, but hold your horses. Because it won't be a shock to you for long. Glory to God. Because you like that person who was just on that backside and didn't have much to say when you were called out. But God's going to call you out to say a whole lot more than what you were able to say tonight. Somebody say amen to that. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what's getting ready to happen. Because the kingdom is different than what we have grown up believing in a lot of ways. You know, you know we've, been, we've grown up believing that, you know, we have church a certain way. You know, that's not really true because we don't know all there is to know about God. Right. Hallelujah. I mean, there's a whole lot that we have never discovered and some of us will not discover in this lifetime about the Lord we serve. But isn't it amazing to know the things that he's already taught you? The things you've already experienced. Come on, Brother Jim. This is, that's the way we've got to know that God is so much more than what we have limited him to. And I say we have limited him because he's not limiting himself. We're the ones that limit him. Say amen, somebody. Glory to God. Now, this is, a, this is, let me tell you, if you don't know who you are, this is a prophetic house. So I need you to say amen because amen says I agree. And your amen is releasing the angels. And we need angelic assistance. We need to give them something to do. And we need to keep empowering them. So every time you say amen to the truth, the angels are going to make it happen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I spent so much time teaching churches how to say amen in New York. I said, don't y'all know how to say amen at all? <laughs> and then they said, amen. I said, see, that ain't the way to say amen. <laughs> but they're good people. Glory to God. But the Lord releases you to the things he wants you to do. Praise God. And how many of you know that a couple years ago, I didn't think I'd be back out there doing this? <laughs> Brother Matt, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't think I'd be back out traveling for 30 days, ministering to all these churches. Melanie, I was so messed up. I don't know if you even knew how messed up I was over there at the other building. Oh, I was such a mess. 
Oh, don't get, see, don't let her get started. She's a mess right there. She's a mess. She's a Holy Ghost good mess. My sister, <laughs> I didn't care. I didn't care. People say, well, I fight to live, fight to live. I was fighting to go. Fighting to go. He had, he had all my information that I felt like was pertinent. I didn't care. All I cared about was him making sure he took care of my son. That young man right there, I don't want to talk about him too much. He'd get embarrassed, but I'll tell you the truth. That's my champ right there. That's James Thomas Roberts III. That's a man right there. He's a man. He, 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 he loves people. He loves people. Let me tell you this story, and I'm going to leave him alone. <laughs> when JT, <laughs> see, you're going to get something started, too. When, J, when JT was little, JT used to, I used to take him to the store. Now, I raised, you know, the kids stayed with me. I had an office, you know, and was running the church. And my wife at the time was, was working uh, as, a, as a manager in Wachovia Bank at the time. And uh, so I kept, kids stayed with me till they went to school. And I taught him how to read by his grace and, and uh, let him watch educational things after they had, you know, after they spent time with phonics and numbers. And, you know, I had it in my head, so I might as well share it with them. Come on. You know, and I didn't let them just play all day. So they learned. And that boy right there, he learned faster than the rest of them because, you know, he was benefiting from an older brother and sister who already were learning. So they just poured into him, too. Well, uh, you know. When he, uh, we were going to uh, Kmart one day, and uh, he, JT said uh, hello to everybody. He always spoke to everybody. There was nobody he didn't speak to. He was very nice, courteous, you know, but I had to make him hold my hand when we went to the store, Brother Jim, because he might go away. And if he didn't go away on his own, somebody might grab him and take him. He was just a nice little fella, you know, and I, I have to stop sometimes and remember, I am a little older now. <laughs> Oh, my God, you know, I'm not that young anymore because he's grown. So anyway, that's just another thought. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're walking through the store one day, and there's some realities. And I'm going to talk about choices tonight in a way. Glory to God. I'm going to talk about choices. I'm going to really bless you by the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost blessed me. Amen. About choices. But, but we walk through an aisle. JT would always say hello, and the people say hello back. Oh, he's so cute. Hey, little fella. Hey, little fella. JT walked by this guy in Kmart one day, and he said hi. And the man just looked at him and kept on going. He said hello. And the guy stopped looking and kept on going. All of a sudden, he said to me, he said, Daddy, he didn't say hi. And his eyes got filled and I was like, oh, God, not right now. <laughs> no, God, I'm not ready to teach this lesson right now. <laughs> oh, God. I, had, I got, did never imagine that it would bother him that someone did not return the greeting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, man, I feel something with that. That's how we serve God. Can you, tell, can you understand how God feels when we don't talk back to him? When we don't show love back to him? And he shows us, this man of God knows what I'm talking about. Don't you remember? He did, we, we love God every day. It, I saw so much love of God in this man. I ain't going to tell on him. I ain't going to tell on him. I ain't going to tell on him. He blessed me so much with the love of God that I, I was in tears because something was happening with him. I ain't going to tell what he was doing, but, but some folks was there, and they saw what he was doing, and it caused me to cry. So y'all figure out what he was doing on your own. But anyway, it was the love of God. And because... He, when he said hello to the man, the man didn't say hello back to him. He just started to cry. And I said, Jay, I hate to have to tell you this, but not everybody is as nice as you want them to be. Not everybody returns the same release thing that you release to them. Oh, can you feel what I'm hearing right now? See, God releases to us, but how many of us return back to him? And if we don't return back to him, how many of us return to somebody? See, see, it's not always, what I love about worship is that I can return it back to God. But God doesn't always want us to worship. He wants us to release. When, I, when bro, you were talking about release tonight, I felt that release. Release. And a lot of us want to hold on, hold on. But God says release, release. You know, you know the only thing stopping the revolution in this region is there's not enough release. Not enough release. Oh, Roger, we, we want to get it. We want our lives better, but we don't want to release. We like, look.
look, some of us have been so long without it, Brother Jack. Some of us have been so long without it that once we get it, we hold on. Oh, God help me tonight. We hold on so tight with what we got because we, I ain't never got this like this before. I never been in this situation before. But God doesn't want you to have it to yourself. He doesn't want you to, he wants you to be excited about it, but he wants you to share the love. Look at somebody say, share the love. Oh, can I get an amen on that? Share the love. Because this didn't come from us. We didn't birth it in ourselves. We didn't create it. God's the one that releases it to us. So why don't we release it to somebody else? He's the one who uses us. Oh, glory to God. He used somebody to release it to you. He used somebody to let you know he loved you. Very few times did God meet us like he met, met Brother Moses. On the, on the back side of the mountain. And the bush was burning. It wasn't bad enough, so Cynthia, that the bush was burning. But the bush called him by name. Oh! And you know what? You know what? They try to make a, they try to, they preach the doctrine wrong. Said Moses, Moses was a stutterer. And God uses the stutterer. People preach that message. That wasn't true. That's not a true doctrine. Romans says Moses was a man of letters. He was well-spoken. But how many of you would be well-spoken if you walked out on the backside of the mountain and you saw a burning bush that was not consumed, and not only was it not consumed, and said, Matt, come on, come on, Matt, talk to me, talk to me, Matt. You'd be like, I don't know what to say. Can I get an amen, somebody? <laughs> so it wasn't that Moses couldn't talk. He just was having a little bit of a struggle right then. He was like, Lord, you want to send me, 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 me? Where? Come on, somebody. Thank you very much. I love you, Tina. Thank you. Woohoo! Glory to God. I didn't know you got that on Sundays. That's good. Thank you. Oh, you got me under control here. That's good. <laughs> I didn't set this atmosphere. Y'all set this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Chris, you was up here rocking for me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I just got into it, bro. That's all. I was feeling it too, man. You know, it's good stuff. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Release. I'm not letting it go, bro. I'm not holding nothing back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. I got several scriptures I want to read, but I want to get a message to you tonight. I really want, to, I want you to get the understanding of the choices, of some choices and the power of your choices. Glory to God. Because this was a choice. This was a choice, a choice to obey God, for leaders to obey God. Hallelujah. Big choice. It's a big choice. Hallelujah. I got a word for you. Glory to God. The Lord just dropped on me. Hallelujah. Big choice. But not only was it a big choice to obey God, it was a big choice for every one of you to come back here tonight. Out of the ordinary, the unusual. Can I tell you, God's working in the unusual. God's working in the things that are not ordinary. Hallelujah. And that's what you're going to see more of. More of, more and more and more of in this season. Not just the season, I hear the Lord say, in this time that has shifted. This time that has changed. This is no longer the time it used to be. I know that for a fact. 17 surgeries later, I know it's not what it used to be. Huh. I think I look okay tonight. I feel pretty good. But you can't see what I look like under here. Because they've done some work on what the man was. And he's not what he was. But I feel like God can use me with a messed up body to do something greater because I know it's not me. Come on, Kelsey, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. How many of you got messed up in here? Yeah. <laughs> You just know God, God will use you when you get messed up. I found out, brother, in my sister-in-law, she wouldn't leave me alone till God started using me all messed up. Messed up. And God still wanted to use me. I didn't want to be used. Help me, somebody. Like, Lord, leave me alone. I have no ambition to preach. I preached for 42 years before I got messed up. Now I'm messed up. Ah. Can I dance on? <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like I can have fun tonight because you set the atmosphere. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. There's some folks I just came from in New York that need to be messed up. There's some of them that were already messed up, Tina. They were already messed up, and I just joined the crowd. Woo! But then there were some. I said, Lord, have mercy. You send me here. <laughs> and I tell you what, there was such resistance in some places to being messed up that they got angry. They had to get angry till they could get messed up. But they got messed up. But they got angry about the choice. It's better that you get joyful about the choice. I said, the Bible says this. And you're going to have to find it. Okay. He says, because thou didst not the will of God. This is Exodus. He says, thou didst not the will of God with joyfulness. 28, right? And with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, all these curses came upon you. He says, you gave, you gave him the choice of the curses and the blessings, right? He said, but because you didn't do the will of God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, he said, you get the bad stuff. So how many of you know it's better to be joyful? Better to be glad. <laughs> I remember Dad Hagen. I was going to meet with Dad Hagen. Dad Hagen, y'all know who Dad Hagen? Kenneth Hagen? Yeah. Okay. If you don't know, we'll, we'll teach you. Thank you. Ken Kenneth Hagen Sr. gone on to be with glory. I was in a uh, meeting with Dad Hagen. Dad Hagen said he wasn't joyful till he read that scripture. And uh, he said, you know what? I didn't have any problem getting joyful real quick. I hurried up and got joyful and got gladness of heart because I wanted the abundance of all things. You see, it was in the word and he realized he, he had an attitude about the things of God. One of the worst things you can be is a person who comes to church with an attitude. Why are you here? Who are you making ugly and mad but yourself? Who, who are you bothering? I mean, because I'm going to praise God. Kelsey, will I worship? Kelsey, no, I get up here, I worship, man. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm going to push myself. You know, y'all don't know what pain I feel, but I'm like, sing, Kelsey. Let's worship, man. Let's go get it. Ain't I, ain't, say amen to that. That's my brother back there. He said amen to that. I come to get in the presence of the Lord. I made a choice. When I get up, where's JT? There he is. Thank you, Jim. You got to make a choice. JT would come up here. I haven't been here in a while, so I'm telling it again. I ain't really talking about him. But he come, what y'all set up? About 7 30, 7 o'clock, Eric, y'all set up early in the morning? Well, I didn't want him coming back to the apartment to get me, so what do I do? I get up 5 o'clock. I get up, like I be up praying anyway. So I get up, get dressed, hallelujah. And when he comes, I come. What do I do? Watch them set up, but I'm sitting right there, and I'm meditating, praying in the Holy Ghost. I know she's coming to pray. And I'm, I'm like, well, Lord, it may not make a difference, but I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost till she gets here while they're setting up. Y'all, see, people don't always know what you're doing. But I made a choice. And I wanted to be here. Glory to God. And you best believe when he gets through preaching, I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I've been here a long time. Now, you know, I know he was up before he got here, but you know, praise the Lord, brother. I was up too, and I'm here. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I made a choice because I wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. And I talk about when I go places, I talk about the worship here. I talk about the freedom to worship. Hallelujah. I talk about the no holes barred worship. Glory to God. You know how powerful that is? When you grow up like I grew up with a standardized worship. Somebody don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Standardized worship. You got to sing certain songs and you got to sing them a certain way. Hallelujah. And you got to get around. They go around. This person take it up. And then the next person take it up. And then that one take it up. By the time they get around, you done sang it for about 45 minutes. Glory to God. And everybody got their little time in. And then nobody been changed. Traveling shoes, Lord. Got on my traveling shoes. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't, you don't know that song. Traveling shoes, Lord. Got on. Take it, bro. Take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Has anybody, anybody ever done that before? Well, I'm sorry if you have. But, Matt, you know what I'm talking about. One person sing it to you, get tired. You get a little lathered. Oh, traveling shoes, Lord. And you, come on, get it. And then the next person, get it. Oh, you know, and they just go around and around. Now, listen. It wasn't the song that was bad. It was purpose. Why do we do what we do? And when we get done, what is different in our lives? 
who is glorified by what we do, the way we do it, when we do it. Who glorified? I thought when we come to the house of God, we come to glorify God. I've been all week long battling. Because I don't know how many of you are, but the devil is never going to leave me alone. He knows he's bound for the pit. He knows he's going to be in the lake. He knows his destiny. He just doesn't want you to choose what God chose for you. So he's going to work on you every day, every second, every minute, every hour, trying to get you to choose his side. And you know how he get, tries to work on you? By telling you a lie. That's why the Bible says he's a liar and the father of lies. He don't know what the He's like, well, I can't tell him truth because the spirit of truth <laughs> is not in him. Jesus said, when he is the spirit of truth, he's come. He will lead you into all truth. You know, another translation says, he will tell you everything that can be known. I can mess with you real now, really, really, really with that one. Because some of y'all are too religious to believe that the Bible is not our end. The Bible is our jump off. The Bible is our foundation. This is where we go to learn how to know him. And then after we know him, it's up to us like this great man of God to listen to things about the well uh, and, and digging in his yard. And Oh, don't make me cry right now. Glory to God. And, and, and getting healed, getting healed. Oh, God have mercy. You can't know that until you know him. Hallelujah, somebody. You've got to know him. Uh, this is where you start. Look at somebody say, this is where you start. But this isn't where you end. Oh, you don't think so? Well, Hebrews 6. Sorry, I'm going wherever I hear right now. Hebrews, because I, I feel that. Release. Release. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Hebrews 6 says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let's grow up. Let's grow up. He said, let's stop being babies. Let's stop being children. Let's go get something from God. Let's get to know God. Let's get to know something else besides what the church doctrine teaches. <laughs> Say, why are you talking about church doctrine? Well, you know what? I grew up in church doctrine. I was the general secretary to the chairman of the board of bishops of the Church of God in Christ. Now, if you don't know what that is, just do your history. You can Google the Church of God in Christ and the millions of members. And I was the general secretary to the chairman of the board of bishops. I know the inside and out. And I knew folks' business. Because the best place to be if you want to have some power in the church is to be the secretary. Because mm. everybody got to come through the secretary. <laughs> Glory to God. You know why they trusted me, Cynthia? Because I didn't tell folks business. But I knew folks business. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you sure I can't tell now? Oh, man, Caleb. I got some stories I could tell. And I used to ask God, Lord, how are these folks going to heaven? And this is not a slam on the church. I'm just talking about what happens in the kingdom, what we call the church, not the kingdom, what we call the church. And it's not just in that church. That's where I grew up. So I can talk about what I know. You speak that which you do know. You testify that which you have seen, right? That's what I know in cell. And I experienced brothers and sisters in other reformations because I've been doing this a long time. But that I lived See, and I had to make a choice. God had to deal with me and said, I need you to make a choice. Are you going to walk in his shoes? Because I was right behind him. I was his next man, you know, to be in his position. Not maybe not the chairman of the board of bishops, but all his jurisdiction and everything. And, and the Lord dealt with me and said, what do you want? Do you want me or do you want this? See, sometimes we got to make a choice. And it's not always about what we want it to be. 
You know, God will challenge you. Do you want what everybody else around you is doing or do you want what God wants for you? And if you choose what God wants for you, sometimes it's going to come with a cost. It's going to come with a cost. You see, you, you, you're going to be challenged sometimes to whether or not you're going to obey God even when it's difficult around people. I found out that people are always motivated by spirits. And once I understood that people are not my friend or my enemy. Can I say that again? People are not your friend or your enemy. They're really not. You say, well, I'm not, that's my friend. No, no, they're really not. Do they, are they obeying God? That's really what you got to find out. Is that person obeying God? So don't make people friends or enemies. Make God your friend. And then God will align you with people who will go ahead and agree with his will for your life. And when you find people who agree with God's plan for you, then you got somebody you can work with. And you, hey, look, I don't mean to be ugly when I say this. I don't trust people. People change. Situations change. Come on. Situations change. I'm not married now. Situations change. So you, what you got to learn how to do, and I'm, no, I rebuke you. I'm not talking out of anger. No, I'm not. When you learn that God has a plan for you, you can handle changing situations. I'm preaching right now. <laughs> and what you want to be able to do is always say yes to God. And then you, can, then you don't have to worry about what people think. You don't have to worry about whether or not people agree. Because you're really here for the purpose of God. Why did I just get off the road, well, out of the air, but I've been out traveling for the last 30 days straight, 31 days, 32 now, uh, straight, is because I've been obeying God. I remember the Lord told me that he wanted me to go to New York. I was like, well, Lord, how am I going to get there? And he began to lay out the process to me. And he really started with one thing, go and speak over a nephew of mine in New York, a great nephew of mine. Glory to God, my oldest sister's grand, new grandson. She was so excited. My sister's so excited. She hadn't been a grandmother. And she is, well, she's the first daughter. Um, so yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to live with that, sister. Glory to God. She just had a birthday. Thank you very much, sister Tina. I need that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to be careful what you say about folks. How you say things. Jesus said, take heed how you hear. And what you hear. So you got to take heed what you say and how you say. Anyway, that's just my, th not my, that's my doctrine. Anyway, I went, I said yes to go pray for Zane. And when I said yes to go pray for Zane, all of a sudden I got all these calls. Can you come do this? Can you? And they didn't even know I was coming to New York. And I'm like, well, Lord, what are you trying to do? He said, I'm trying to show you that my plan for you starts with one yes. One choice. One choice to obey God can change everything in your life. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling right now. One choice. Hallelujah. Oh, man, don't make me shout in here. To say yes to God, one choice, changes everything. Mm, thank God there ain't no B3. Hallelujah. <laughs> changes everything. I've been in places I didn't think I'd ever go again. I went to see Secor Road. Oh, I grew up in Secor Road. I don't even know. We had a number, didn't we, at some point on Secor Road? I don't remember what the number was on Secor Road. It was in the woods. <laughs> it was in the woods. I'm not a woods person. I'm trying to figure out how did the Lord let me grow up in the woods? And I loved it. I was mad when we left the woods. And we went to the city. I was not happy because I'd spent my time, oh, I feel you, Lord, being acclimated. Uh, I was getting acclimated to my surroundings. I feel like preaching right now. I got used to a situation that God was not really ready to leave me in. And I was ready to stay. But God had a different plan. Hello, somebody. I'm here to tell you tonight that God's getting ready to move you. Oh, yes. There's some moving going on in your life. Uh, God's dealing with you about some things that you would not do on your own. And even tonight, as God is leading me to speak this into your heart, God is confirming some things that he's challenging you about because you won't do it on your own. But God says, I got a plan for you that's greater than your surroundings. I got a plan for you to take you to places that are so great that men and women are already calling your name that you don't even know about. People you have not even met know who you are. Glory to God. I'm telling you, that's how the kingdom works. God is arranging your life 
to take you into new doors. And he says, do not resist going into those doors. Hallelujah. It may take you away from some things you got comfortable with, but that's okay. Because God says it's not over. Even when you go, it's not over. He said, I can bring you back around. I can take you to some of the places you like being, but I'm going to introduce you to some places you've never been. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Hold that. Hold that. Because there's some specific things I didn't say because I got a mic in my hand. But I'm trying to tell you, God has a plan for you, which is really going to catapult you. That's the word I heard. Catapult you into some new things in your destiny. Again, again, a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Where am I at? You got well, Am I okay back there? Okay, she ain't giving me no new time. Glory to God. <laughs> Can I give you a word? Oh, glory to God. I feel like I'm just exhorting right now. Glory to God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, if you got to say amen. Hallelujah. There's three things I want to tell you. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, time constraints. I, I need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to them. They, they egging me on and stuff too. Lord, have mercy. They're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> according, this is King James, according as his God's divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, the Godhead, that have called us to glory and virtue. One of my favorite scriptures in the, in the word. Let me read that out of the Amplified Bible because I'm going to rush through the rest of it. I just, because I get a couple of other things I want to hit. He says in verse 3 in the Amplified Version, For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things. If you highlight anything, you need to highlight this verse. All things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence or virtue. God has given to us all things. I need you to say this with me. I have all things that God has released to me in the kingdom. And I get these things through knowledge, his knowledge, not my knowledge. Did you get that? God has given us all things. I've been teaching this scripture for a long time, off and on, whenever the Lord tells me to. I love this scripture. You know what the Lord told me the other night? He said there's a whole difference between knowing this and living this. You know, when you, got, when you come back to certain scriptures, man of God, don't you know you'd be like, I taught this before, I've dealt with this before. But God is not through with dealing with you about that. He got something else he wants to show you, something else he wants to reveal to you. God said, look, I know you know this. You know this very well. You can quote it. You know, you can quote several versions of it. He said, but can you live it? See, see, when I was on the floor in 2016, desperately wanting to leave, I was, I was, I was done. I don't know, did you, did you delete all that stuff I sent you? <laughs> all of the memorial stuff, all of the, 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 you know, here, say this about me. This is my information, and I don't want this one. I even told him, I don't want this one. I had nothing to say. Now, if I need prayer for that, you just say, Lord bless you. That, that, may, that may mean I got an attitude with somebody, <laughs> and I still need Jesus. Hello, somebody. <laughs> but I got the mic. <laughs> that must mean I'm qualified. Hello, somebody. <laughs> if you've been doing as long as I have, you probably pretty qualified. Anyway, I'm transparent. I will tell on myself. I found out if you tell on yourself, the devil can't. Got nothing to hide, but Matt. <laughs> nothing to hide. <laughs> I got nothing to hide, man of God. It's all a written book. Some folks can't handle me like that. Because no, you know why? <laughs> you know why, Mary? Because if you ask me to come preach for you, I might tell on you too. <laughs> I, might, I told one preacher, 
Did you get me something I didn't see? Okay, she ain't raised nothing. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I better look at my own watch. Glory to God. Oh, I got time. Glory to God. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, this preacher, look, y'all, I am a bishop and an apostle. <laughs> so I'm not a regular preacher. <laughs> okay, let's all embrace that reality right now. <laughs> and I've been preaching. They let me preach starting at 14. They let me preach which means I was already saying something before they said it was okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't just start at 14. I was already preaching to the trees and, and standing on stumps out in Romulus and Secor Road, <laughs> going out saying, and Jesus said, glory to God, if they don't want to hear me in the church, I preach to the outside, glory to God. <laughs> I was preaching, glory to God. I don't know if I was reaching, but I was preaching. Glory to God. We were blessed by the dancers, I guess. Y'all need to know, I was blessed. I just need y'all to know that I was blessed. Not only was I blessed, you messed me up. Okay? God bless you. I didn't mean to put you on blast, but I just want you to know before you go, did you bless me? <laughs> Glory to God. Can I be who I am? <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. And so, so when, you, when, you, when you hear God... You always have a choice of whether or not you're going to say yes or ignore God. Very few people say no. Very few people say no. Some folks act like they didn't hear. <laughs> I was beating myself up in 2016, laying on the floor, beating myself up while I was dying, beating myself up over stuff that wasn't my fault. Giving myself extra pain over stuff that didn't go like I thought it should go because I thought it was my fault because I had bad doctrine. I had been taught poorly. I know how to enunciate. I know how to articulate. So even if I get a little ethnic on you, don't think I can't come back and straighten it out. I have preached in some of the most hallowed <laughs> sanctuaries in America. Yes of different denominations and reformations. And I also know how to say it like I want it said. <laughs> say amen, somebody. <laughs> and I was laying on the floor, messed up, and causing myself to be worse. Hello, somebody. Some of us are in situations right now that it's really not the devil who's putting the pressure on you. I was in a situation the devil wasn't even messing with me, man of God. It was me. Because I had poor teaching. Poor doctrine. The devil didn't have to mess with me in that area. And I've listened to this man of God, my younger brother, who came to the church, and him and his wife would drive two and a half hours every week. Never late. I still can't get over that. One way. Thank you for the reminder. Two and a half hours one way and be sitting outside in the parking lot before church started. He's qualified to teach you how to walk this thing. So you don't have to worry about getting poor doctrine. Poor I know where I'm going. Poor teaching. I laid on the floor as a result, after, even after preaching for over 40 years, of poor teaching that was still on the inside of me. Oh! Because somebody told me that anything that happens in my life is my fault. And I had to learn that you can't make choices for others. You cannot, don't you dare pray somebody's mind into a different place. That's witchcraft. Manipulation and control is witchcraft. <laughs> and if we go to the Old Testament, all witches were not suffered to live. They got killed. Thank God for grace. I heard grace tonight. Thank God for grace. Hallelujah. I was in bad shape for stuff that was still on the inside that I thought I'd been delivered from. Now, I, had, I was dealing with some health issues. Oh, yes. Don't get me wrong. A cancer they still don't know how to cure. Doctors, when I go, I got to go. That's one of the reasons I come back is because I know I got to go see them, you know. And every time I see them, they want to remind me. 
you know, we don't have a cure for this. I heard you the first time. I heard the doctor 20 some years ago when he told me that. You're not telling me nothing new. I don't need you to keep telling me this. But I'm here. No matter that you think you don't have a cure for it, I need you to know that you're not my cure anyway. You're not my healer. You're not my deliverer. I lived all the time before I met you. Before you cut me, I was still alive. You're cutting me, help me get free a little bit. Oh, glory to God. I didn't want to get cut. Don't like being cut. Don't like having to recover. That's the worst part of being cut is recovery. Oh, man. Tell me. <laughs> so I told the Lord. And I told him, you better agree with me. I told him, don't cut me no more. And then, I, then after I said that, you know what? The devil tried to, then I knew. See, I knew. I got you, devil. See, I know. You know when you got him? It's after you make a confession when he starts doing something to you. All of a sudden, two new lumps showed up. I said, uh, you a liar. You are a liar. I know better. <laughs> no, they weren't there when they cut me, and they're not getting ready to cut me again because you want to make me think that this stuff is going to kill me. Do you know what? Go ahead and kill me if you can because all I'm doing is going home. I told him, I said, kill me, brother. If you that bad and you can kill me, all you're getting ready to do is release me to the place I've been trying to get to anyway. But I don't think even he can override the plan of God. Hello, somebody. And let me tell you this before I finish. The Lord sent me up there just like he sent me here to release hope. To release hope. I can tell you this. Thank you, Lord. That on the first, the, the, the first set of services we had, Sunday morning, I think it was the 12th. Well, it wasn't the first service we had, but it was the, when I went to do some training and, and building up apostolically in Syracuse, New York. I was done. I finished preaching and exhorting and prophesying and sharing with people. And I went to sit down on the podium over to the side. And it's on Periscope. If you all have Periscope, anybody wants to go see it, you can see it. Anyway, I looked across from the podium to the other side of the sanctuary. And there was a sister sitting there. And she was just, remember how mama used to just rock in the seats? And she was just rocking. She was rocking. And in that moment, she reminded me of mama. Same complexion, same kind of hairstyle. And the Holy Ghost said, see her? I need you to minister to her. I was like, well, why are you, you know, I was, I could tell I was in myself then. I said, well, why didn't you tell me that when I was up? I'm tired. He said, I need you to minister to her. And I, I jumped up. You know, he don't have to get no more forceful than that. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, this is your life, not mine. And I went to the pastor. He was wrapping things up. I said, I said, apostle, hold on a second. I said, that sister over there. I said, the Holy Ghost just told me to minister to her, and I really don't know why. He said, well, I know why. I said, why? He said, because she got stage four cancer. I said, well, then, hey, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost got bold in me. I said, well, hey, then, come on out. You got the right one. God sent me for you. Why? Because I, got, I have been battling a cancer for over 20 years that they still don't understand. And they may not understand the rest of the time I'm on the earth, but that's okay. It's all a testimony to the power of God. If I leave tomorrow, God kept me here to say this. Oh, man, don't make me shout up in this place. But I don't think I'm leaving tomorrow. Because <laughs> he's setting the agenda, Roger. I got stuff already lined up for next year. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? He said, I'm doing what I know you will do. I'm commanding you to go. And so here, here it is. Uh, she comes out. Immediately, she knew what she had been praying for, God had heard. In that moment, she got healed. I knew she was healed as soon as she heard God pay attention to her. She received her healing. I thought, Crystal, I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. I said, well, hey, I don't need to do nothing. I, said, I told her, I said, Rochelle, the Lord sent me to bring hope. And the Lord had been dealing with me about hope. He said, whatever happened to our hope? We preach faith, faith, faith. But we forget that faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't have any hope, you got no substance. You got nothing to stand your faith on without hope. I said, God told me to give you hope. Hope to know that he loves you. Hope to know that he doesn't want you to die. Hope to know that it doesn't matter how old you are, he's still got work for you to do. It's not over. 
And you need to know that your hope will not make you ashamed. The same word for hope in that scripture, the same word in Acts 10.35 where he says, cast not away therefore your confidence. It's the same word. It's just who's doing, how they interpret how they translated it. In one section they translate it as hope. In another section they translate it as confidence. Hallelujah. So he says, don't throw away your confidence for that great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God. Pastor, this is what the Lord told me to tell you tonight. And I better say it before I run out of time. Hallelujah. Just hold on to your patience. Because you are doing the will of God. Because you are both hearing God. And because you're obeying God. He said you have great recompense of reward. Hallelujah. He said, don't you let the devil take it. Don't you throw it away, which you won't. But he said, don't you let the devil steal a bit of your confidence. He said, hold great confidence before the kingdom. Stand strong. Preach strong. Teach strong. Worship strong. Pray strong. In great confidence. He said, your confidence will become the confidence of the house. And the confidence of the house will become the confidence in the region. Glory to God. And the confidence of the region will touch the earth. Glory to God. For because the reward of God is to touch the lives of people. There are so many people around you that you don't even realize who have lost confidence because they've been waiting to see something. They've been waiting to see a certain result. But God said, they will trust me. I'm the God of results. I'm the God of confidence. I'm the God of reward. As you see your reward, they will see their reward. Don't you quit. Don't you falter. Don't you back up. Keep obeying God, for the Lord wants to do what he said he would do through you. Somebody say amen to that. And give the Lord a good praise. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Whew, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me close with this. He says there, he says, I have already given you all things. All things. Now, I don't want you to raise your hand, but I want you to be honest with yourself. How many of us are still asking God for things in our lives? Don't, you don't have to raise your hand. I don't want to tell on you right now. I don't want you to tell on yourself. We're still asking God, do this for me. Get this to me. I need to see this. God says, I have already given you all things. According as his divine power. Is there any power greater than his divine power? If there is, let me know. If there is, I need to follow that power. But it's not in Buddha, not in Confucius, not in Mary. Come on, somebody. Huh? It's not in communism, fascism. It's in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His divine power hath given. He gave it before Walter Earl Roberts was a twinkle in his mom and daddy's eye. (laughs) That's a long time. And even before that, before they were twinkles in their mama's eyes. (laughs) He gave us all things that pertain to our life and to a godly relationship with him and the earth. According to he says that we would get this by knowledge. So when teaching is going on, you have to excuse me, but if I'm Bishop Walter Roberts, which means I've been doing this a long time, and they trust me to pastor pastors, and Apostle Walter Roberts, I didn't give this to myself. These are people who are sound in the kingdom. Some of them whom you've seen on television or somewhere else, I can name names, but it ain't worth it right now. Huh. Who has said to me, you're qualified to go do this. So if I can do what I'm doing and still bring a notebook and a pen, I bring two pens to church with me. I don't bring one alone. Mm -mm. I bring one that's a fine point so I can underline what I highlight. And then I bring another one. Look at him. He he holds my stuff up. And then I bring another one. That I like to write with. It's a medium point. Because fine points tear my paper. So, but they're good for underlining in the Bible. And I only underline what I've already highlighted. Help me, somebody. So that means I've already seen it before. But I'm still getting something out of it. 
if I can do that, what makes you think you're better than me and you can't keep notes or keep track of the word that's coming forth in the house? Can I be an apostle right now? How dare you be so big and bad and so grown, so knowledgeable in the word. And I know I'm a student of the word, been to college, been to theological training. I can tell you that the word says what it says and it means what it means. And it's up to us to discern what it means by what it says when it was said. That's what theologians know about the word of God. Not that they know perfectly, but we have to discern what it, was, what it says, by what, what it means by what it says. When he said it. So you can't take it out of context. Even if you're a faith person, you can't take it out of context. Help me somebody. Boy, I got to quit, but I feel it right now. <laughs> Get yourself a notebook, a journal. Hallelujah. That's right. She reminded me of Kathy. My sister has every message she's ever heard me teach. I've asked her. I, need, I told her, I said, I need to do some reteaching on something. Can you get me a message from such and such a time? And she says, I'll, I'll email it to you. So she'll go and get it from years ago and type it out in email and send it to me. She's been my secretary for over 20-some years. Now, that's a good sister. You think I'm going to trust somebody else? She got to be with me until she go. And I'm praying her to stay. <laughs> And have nimble fingers and a clear mind and a loving heart. I want her to love me. He loves me. They love me. Glory to God. I thank God for the love of God. But get a notebook. Get the word. And don't just write it. Rehearse it. I've got notebooks, even stuff that I've had for years. And I go back over it. And you know what? It doesn't hurt me to teach it again. Amen. Amen. I get a new revelation that blesses me. Because if it don't bless me, Mac, it ain't going to bless nobody else. So that means I ain't stealing nobody else's message. <laughs> and I ain't getting off the, nothing off the internet. <laughs> I'm getting it from God. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. So that he can be per pertinent and, and relevant to the lives of people. Glory to God. I got to quit. My God. Let me say this. You can write it down if you, got, if you write that fast or to get it on TV. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and you go back and see where I meant to go. Is that okay, Pastor Lynette? This is where I meant to go. But the, but the release and the grace hit me up in here tonight. Ah! You, can, you can rap a little more, bro. <laughs> where she at? Come on. Can you stand the rain for me? Ah, I'm going to hear that tonight. <laughs> can you stand the rain? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. She say that? Did you say that one? Uh, okay. I just heard that. <laughs> yes, I was saved when I heard it in the first time. And I loved the Lord then, just like I do now. <laughs> but I like that song. <laughs> I like some others, but I ain't going to sing them tonight. <laughs> uh, listen to this. John 10. Did I say John 10, 9, 10? Okay. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, you got to come into the kingdom through him. He says, but the thief comes not, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm come that you might have life. You might have it more abundantly. Take that scripture, having life. Tap into the fact that he says he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And begin to pray that. Begin to meditate that. Quote that. Speak that over your life every day. I told a sister last night. She said she, you know, she had a dream. Of healing. She had a dream of getting hands laid on her. She was going to be healed of cerebral palsy. I said, well, I'm the man. I come to release hope to you to do it. But she said, I've got to. I said, no, don't ever say again. I needed you. Don't ever say again. Don't ever tell nobody. I've got cerebral palsy. No, you don't. Because God has healed you. You don't have it, but the devil wants you to keep it. God delivered you from it. Hallelujah. You're the healed. And the devil's trying to make you sick. And we won't have it. I said, when I come back next year, I'm coming to dance with you on bones that the Lord has broken. Hallelujah. Glory to God, because you're not going to say that. I said, if you got to say something when people ask you about it, just say, I thank God that he's healed me from cerebral palsy. Thank God for his miraculous power that he's done this in my life. I said, don't ever tell the devil something he can use to work with. Okay? And then finally, Acts chapter 11 through 15. What is that about? It's about a church. 
that made choices. Hallelujah. Bible says Saul went to Antioch because the Antioch folks were getting messed up. It was, it was a mess. I think I got about a minute. That's rolling down. It was a mess in Antioch. But the Holy Ghost fell in Antioch. The Holy Ghost has fallen in this region. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call him, he is here. And he is manifesting in this place. You have to choose to receive the manifestation. You have to choose to agree with the manifestation. You have to choose to be a part of the manifestation. It's all up to you to choose. But when they chose to say amen, they chose to say yes. They chose to agree. The Bible says Saul went and saw such great manifestations of God, he knew I can't help these people alone. And he went and found Saul, who became Paul. And say, I need you to come help me, bro. Why? Because it's called team ministry. It's called apostolic ministry. And I don't know whether apostle want me to mess with that tonight or not. I ain't got but a minute, so I can't go far. But this is an apostle. He's the apostle of God. And I have the authority to decree that and to say that in his life. I said it years ago to him, and he's walking it out. You cannot build the house that's being built here unless you have an apostolic anointing. And God is using you to build up ministry anointings around you. Yes. Glory to God. This is not for you to do alone. But God has anointed you to establish, to structure, to put in order things that need to be put in order. And call forth ministers. Call forth prayer warriors. Call forth evangelists. Call forth the prophets. Call forth the teachers. Glory to God. And choose a pastoral staff that will help to keep this thing together and moving forward. That's the word of the Lord for this house. Make the right choice. Say amen to God. Agree with what the Lord is doing. Mark. God, I'm telling you that there is something great going on in Iowa. And I thank God, Brother Mac, that I get to be a part of what he's doing. Somebody say amen. God bless you, Pastor. I got to let it go. And I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand to your feet. Turn it off.